spotlight and come out there with me. So I'm out there and she's out there, you know, and I'm like shining the light down there to the barn so I can see, you know, so I'm walking down there and I get down there and then I'm walking back to the house and she went inside so I had no spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> now how many of you, you go outside and you're checking on your horse or your sheep or your cows, whatever you got, and you're out there and how many of you scared of the dark? Now I know not too many people are going to raise your hand. But let me tell you, we ain't scared of the dark when we got a spotlight, right? But you get out there in the middle of the field. I get out there in the middle of that 10 acres, and we got a coyote that's been hanging around the field, okay? Okay, don't shine on people's face. Did I shine it in your face? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to turn it off so I don't shine. But I'm out there, okay, I'm going to point it up to the ceiling. I'm out there in the middle of the 10 acres. And I'm looking for this coyote, okay? And all of a sudden, you know, I was that that coyote? Boom, my spotlight goes out. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, now, I got a rifle with me in case I see him, I can shoot him, right? But what if I didn't have my rifle with me? You'd be running. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably wouldn't be running because... This fat boy don't run unless something I know is after you. And then you better be running too, because I'm going to outrun you. You ask my girls, I can run when I need to run. Bad me or not. But you out there in the middle of the field checking on the horses or the sheep or whatever, and the spotlight goes out, and now you're hearing everything that makes a noise. The acorn drops out of the tree. Sounds like a daggum herd of elephants just come through this <laughs> You know what I mean? And I'm a big boy, but I'm going to tell you, when you hear that, that, that limb fall out of the tree and it's just a little twig, it sounds like the whole tree just fell. But when we keep our eyes on Jesus, it doesn't matter what we're facing in life. We could be facing the loss of a job. We could be facing the loss of a parent. We could be facing the economy dropping that we may be facing right now. You know, they're shutting down the airlines, they're shutting down the cruise lines, they're closing down just about everything around us. You know, 401ks are probably facing to start dropping. I'm not trying to scare nobody this morning, but hey. You know, it's reality. We got to keep our eyes focused on the light of the world. That's Jesus Christ, people. Because the reality is, that's the only hope we have. Money fades. Material things fade. But at the end of the life, at the end of the world, Jesus Christ is still there. Now that I've got off track and lost my place. <laughs> and then he says in verse 4 there, For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Y'all probably wonder what these sticks are for up here. I know this is a kind of a cheesy looking staff, shepherd's staff. I told y'all I ain't really a shepherd. I just got sheep. I don't use no, no staff. We should. You're gonna jump him. <laughs> we, we was worming sheep the other day, and one of them jokers jumped about jumped right over. My wife ain't very tall now, so she's only four foot. Or I'm sorry, five foot two. But they about jumped right over the top of her head, and that thing ain't but that ain't but that tall. But we got the rod and the staff. Jesus, the shepherd, takes the staff and. It's got the hook on her, and you can reach out there and grab that sheep by its neck and, and pull it back into the flock. You got the rod, you can beat the, the wild animals off of them. You know, and, and generally they wouldn't use both. They would have one or the other. Uh, but Jesus would have the rod and thy staff. He would use these to protect the flock. The shepherd would protect the flock with the rod and thy staff. But Jesus, when we are going through our hard times in life, he would use thy rod and thy 
staff to protect us in our hard times and in our troubles. He would guide us and direct us. And we can trust Jesus to protect us because he has his rod and his staff to protect us against the wild animals when we're out in that field. Now don't go out, wild, out in the middle of the field when you know the coyotes out there looking for you. Verse 5, he says, David says, Thou preparest the table before me. Here's the table. He's preparing it before us. God is preparing a table before us. We are God's honored guest. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is preparing a table before me. God Almighty is preparing a table before me. How many of you have sat down and ate dinner with the Queen of England? If, if you have, I'd like to talk to you. How many of you have sat down and ate dinner with President Trump? With President Obama? With who was before Obama? <laughs> President Bush. I think it's a long time ago. Uh, President Clinton. One of the other presidents. <laughs> some of y'all are old, so y'all live some of y'all live through quite a few presidents. So any of these presidents. How, how about with one of the governors? Uh, Aunt Carol, she's famous. She's ate with one of the pres uh, one of the governors. Wow, she's famous. I didn't know I had a famous aunt. She's ate with one of the governors. <laughs> I cleaned a deer for the mayor's son here this year. <laughs> I guess I'm special. <laughs> the king of kings, the Lord of lords, God Almighty is preparing a table for me. For us, for you, if you're a born again Christian, in the presence of his enemies, he says, this shows us the security that we have, that we can sit down at God's feast and eat. He, he says, thou shalt anoint this my head with oil. Who wants to get their head anointed with oil this morning? I'll pour some oil over your head. Everybody up here, they're pointing at each other up here. No, Amanda. 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 Hi. Hi. This is Extra light tasting olive oil. Mm, that's my favorite. The, the anointing of oil was actually <laughs> olive oil mixed with perfumes that they poured over the head. And it was generally only used for special guests. This was for the, 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 the top of the line guests. This was for other kings, <laughs> for, for <laughs> dignitaries, for, for top of the line people that would come in and visit, they would anoint their heads with oil. And, and it was perfumes mixed with olive oil so that they would smell fancy. And, and so God says, I'm going to anoint your head with oil. We're going to be treated as the top of the line guests. We're going to be treated as, as, as princesses and, and kings and, and royalty. We're going to be treated as the highest and the best guest. Then he, he closes verse 5 there. He says, my cup runneth over. God supplies our needs. He starts to fill our cup. You don't just stop there. You don't just say, hey, there's your needs. You know, that's all you need. No. He starts to give us what we need and he just keeps going. And he just keeps supplying. And he just keeps supplying. And he just pours and pours and pours until it runs over. And this isn't one of those name it and claim it sermons. This isn't one of those, you know, hey, it's all, you know, you, you pray for it and, and God's going to bless it until you can't. You know, it ain't one of those. I ain't Joel Osteen. But 
God says, my cup runneth over. Because, see, when we're following God, when we keep our eyes on the light of the world, when we do like 2 Chronicles 7, 14 said that we looked at earlier, when we repent of our sins and, and we turn from our wicked ways, God will overflow our cup. He will anoint our heads. In verse 6, he says, Surely goodness and mercy. I, I love this verse. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God meets our eternal needs when we come to Him for salvation. Shepherds often have sheep dogs that, that keep the, the sheep from, from wandering. I almost <coughs> called Sarah and asked her to bring one of her blue healers this morning, but then again, the kids would want to be up here petting dogs, so I did. Jesus, the divine shepherd, has two sheep dogs named Goodness and Mercy. Sometimes they bark and nip at you when, when they wander, when, uh, nip at the, the sheep when they wander from the fold. They do it with the intent of driving you back into the fellowship with, the, with your shepherd so that you may have eternal dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See the sheep dog up here on the, on the, on the screen? He's, he's herding the sheep back into the fold. Sometimes Jesus has got to send the sheep dogs goodness and mercy after us. They've got to get us back into the line. He, he sends his angels after us. He sends, he sends us to get us back into the line where we need to go. Sometimes we're hard-headed. And it takes a little bit more nudging, a little bit more nipping at the heels to get us back in line. And Jesus is the good shepherd. And a good shepherd sometimes has to fight off wild animals. David, he says in the Old Testament there that, that he fought off lions. And he fought off wild animals with his bare hands, with a staff, and with a sling and a, and a rock. See, these good shepherds, they, they fight off the wild animals. They have to defend their sheep against animals. And sometimes they got to put their life on the line. And our, our shepherd, Jesus, the good shepherd, he gave his life. John 10, 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. <clears throat> John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I want to close with this. Romans 10, verses 9 through 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. <clears throat> Jesus is the shepherd, and he's calling us this morning unto salvation. He'll lead you to the green pastures, to the still waters. But he's calling you on to salvation. If you're here this morning and you've never had that opportunity to come on to him for salvation, today is the day. Today is the day of salvation. There's, there's, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You know, you have a choice. It's either heaven or hell. There, there's no choice C. There's no option C. As Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You can't pay your way to heaven. You can't give your way to heaven. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't be a good enough person. It's only through salvation in Jesus Christ, through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So if you're here this morning, and you've never had that opportunity to confess your sins and call upon him, then today is the day. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to talk with you. Maybe you're here this morning. You've never had an opportunity to be obedient and follow him in believer's baptism. Today, you know, we'd love to fill our baptistry and, and, you know, make that option available to you. You know, come and let us talk with you further. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.
Father, we, we come this morning. Lord, just thanking you for this opportunity you've given us to just come and, and, and talk to these people this morning. And Lord, just share Psalms 23 with them, Father. Father, I thank you for being our shepherd. Lord, being our personal shepherd. Lord, knowing that if we mess up, that you will guide us back. Lord, that you will restore our soul. Lord, that, that no matter what we do, you'll pick us up and dust us off. Lord, I thank you that no matter how far we wander away, you'll always come and find us and bring us back to the fold. And Father, I thank you that I that even though I've wandered away, that even though I've I've made my mistakes, Lord, that you've come and you've found me, you've brought me back to the fold. And Lord, you've restored my soul for a time like today. Lord, that you've built me up and you've put me behind this pulpit, that you've stood me on this stage today for a time like today to fill me with your Holy Spirit to speak your word. But Lord, if there's any here today, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would move in their lives and in their hearts today. And Father, that pride, that shyness, that fear would not hold them back. That Lord, that you would break those things in their life today. That they would come forward and accept you as their Lord and Savior today. That Father, that they would realize that they're not guaranteed tomorrow. That Lord, we, we could go to bed tonight and not wake up in the morning. That we could get in a car accident on the way home, that, that Lord, we, we need to take this opportunity today to accept you as our Lord and Savior. And Father, as your word says, that we would rejoice with the angels in heaven over one lost soul coming to salvation. So Lord, we thank you for this time that you've given us to come and to hear from you. Lord, we come now for this time of invitation. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand and sing with us? Sweet hour of prayer.